Hey, so for your life's math industry, and we are going to take a look at the domain and range. And sure enough, yes, this is an algebra lesson. So in this math video, we then, you're going to take a look on what the domain and range is. And in the past videos, or if you ever learned this in your previous algebra classes, we've been trying to take a look at how can we name X and Y rather than just being two letters of X and Y? Well, here's how we can name them. The X is going to be called the domain, or the X axis. All X values, and the Y represents the range, all the Y values. An equation such as, like this, Y equals, like, 7X plus 3, whatever you put into X, is going to be in for y. So that's why it means the y depends on what you insert and put in for x. So what we're going to be doing in this lesson is after we understood and about the domain and the range, we are going to do some puzzles. So the puzzle is we have to find the values of x and y, put them in here, and find out is it a function. But let's get started. Let's look at the domain because many mathematicians like to do x before y. So for the domain, we have 10, I'll put them on that list, negative 2, 5, and 4. If your teacher wants it in a numerical pattern or a numerical order, you would say negative 2 because that's the least, 4, 5, and 10. So, least to greatest. That's if your math teacher really wants you to do that. For the y values, we're going to have 7, 4, 3, and 10. To understand what's happening, if your teacher wants it in a numerical order again, we're going to say 3, 4, 7, and 10. And don't forget the commas. Is it a function? Well, there's no x's that are repeated, and there are no y's that are being left out. Which means it makes sense to say, yeah, this is a function. This is a function. And let's add that smiley face, because if you find a function, that's actually really, really good. The reason why it's a function is there's one x input into a y value. And not only that, it passes the vertical line test on a graph, if visually shown. This math puzzle is going to be a little bit crazier. But the crazy thing is, it's a table instead of a bunch of points or coordinates. Well, let's see what happens. So we have x's and y's. And sure enough, the y's, hey look, it's on this numerical value. So for the x's, we have 1, negative 3, 1, 2, and 0. If you want to put that into a numerical order, you say negative 3, 1, 1 again. Wait, negative 3, 0, then a 1, then 1 again, then 2. For the range, Luckily for us, it's going to be in order exactly. So for the range, we have negative 2, negative 1, 0, 2, and 3. So now we have to find out if it's a function or not. So notice how we have on the table two ones that go from here to here and here to here. Oh yeah, that's a negative 2. And look at the domains. We have two ones right here and two ones right there. If your teacher accepts, when you write down all the numbers of the domain and the range, if you have repeats, then you don't have to rewrite them. But the reason why it's encouraged to rewrite them is because if you notice, there are two ones in the domains, which is very, very bad because you can't have one number go into two y values, which means since there's not just one to one, and there's not one input to an output, 
That means, no, this is not a function. This is not a function. And we're going to put a frowny face because it can't be a function. So this is not a function because there are more than one value going to y as a domain. So that is an easy example, or two examples, of the domain and range. I hope this video has helped you understand the domain and range for algebra. Thank you for watching Tao Opinion Life's Math Industry. Like and subscribe.